Right, let's have a look at the 2014 question on, on algebra, question 12 on paper one. So simplify, the first part was multiplying, simplify 6x minus 3 by 2x minus 1. Okay, so everything in the first bracket must be multiplied by everything in the second bracket. Okay, and some people are taught this by arrows, so 6x by those two minus 3 by those two. Okay, other students then are taught to split the first bracket and go 6x multiply by everything in the second bracket and go back for the minus 3 by everything in the second bracket. Okay, so whether you do the arrows, you're doing the same thing. That's 6x by everything in the second bracket minus 3 by everything in the second bracket. The only difference here is that we write it out. Okay, and then you multiply. So it's 6x by everything in the, inside this bracket, minus 3 by everything inside of this bracket. So 6 twos, 12, x by x, x squared. 6x, so 6 by minus 1 is minus 6x. And then I have minus 3 by 2x, so minus 3 by 2 is minus 6 x again. Now be careful here because you have minus by minus to give you a plus. Three ones are three. Okay, and then you can only group like terms together. So x squareds can only go with x squared. So I only have one of them. Then x's can go with x's. So I have minus six, minus six. So if someone owes you six euros and then they owe you another six, it's minus 12 x. And then the plus three. So that's your answer. OK, so that was part A. Part B then was a long division. Simplify 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 1. OK, or how you will always see long division written out when you go to solve it. It's 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. And you want to divide that by x minus 1. OK. So what you do is you, whatever goes up here, right, you multiply it by what's on the left and you put the answer here. OK. And you do a term by term. Because there's two terms out here, there's the x and the 1, OK, it makes it a little bit complicated. So what we do is we consider the x and we go, what must I multiply by the x to bring it up to 3x cubed? OK, so we need a 3 and we need two more x's. OK, so that when I multiply that x by this 3x squared, I get it equal to this term here. That's what you're trying to do. OK, and then that 3x squared then gets multiplied by the x, but it also gets multiplied by the minus 1. So that's where the minus 1 comes into it. So 3x squared by x is 3x cubed. And then 3x squared by minus 1, well, I have minus 3 ones are 3x squared. OK. So you put a line under it and then you cancel. OK, so change the sign, change the sign. So that you get 3x cubed minus 3x cubed to cancel. And that's what you wanted to happen. That's why you made the match. OK, and then you add the rest. So minus 2 plus 3 is a 1x squared. Then we take down the minus 3x because we haven't used that yet. And we take down the plus 2. OK. And then you do the exact same thing again. So I'm going to delete out these two arrows. OK. So I'm going to go in to myself. What do I multiply by x to bring it up to x squared? Because just like I can cancelled the x cubes there, on this line I want to cancel the x squares. So what must I multiply by x to make it x squared? And that's another x, because x by x is x squared. 
And then just like before, you multiply x by the x and x by the minus one. Okay, so x by x gives me x squared. x by minus one gives me minus one x or minus x. Okay. Uh, change the sign, change the sign. x squared minus x squared cancels. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. And then let's add the rest. So minus three plus one gives me minus two x. And then I take down the plus two because I haven't used that yet. Or another way of looking at it, you can go plus two uh, plus zero is two. Okay, and then you do it all over again. So let me delete out these arrows and finish with those ones. What must I multiply by x to bring it up to minus two x squared? Well, I need a minus and I need a two. I don't need another x up there because the x is here and I only need a single x. So, and then you multiply that minus two by the x and minus two by the minus one. So you can see it's it's the same steps in each of these sequences all the way down. Okay, so minus two by x is minus two x. And then I have minus by minus to give me a plus, and then two by one to give me two. So I want to change the sign, change the sign, so that I get minus two X plus two X cancels to zero, plus two minus two cancels to zero. So my answer is what's up on top, three X squared plus X minus two. In other words, when I divide that by X minus one, I get this. Okay, and if I was to check my answer, not that you have to do this, okay, so this isn't uh, part of this particular sum, but if I was to take x minus one and I was to multiply it by this, three x squared plus x minus two, so the same multiplying like, like I did up here, I should get this as my answer. Okay, so these are what we call the factors of this cubic equation. Cubic is because it's to the power of three. And these are the factors. So when I multiply them, I should get back to the original. So just like the top one, I'm gonna split the first bracket and multiply it by everything in the second bracket. And then I'm going to go back for the minus one and multiply it by everything in the second bracket. Okay, so you can see it's the same type of sum is this one. It's just longer because there's an extra term in the second bracket. Okay. But how you do it mathematically is the same. So x by 3x squared is 3. There's two x's and another one on the outside. So it's x cubed plus x by x is x squared. x by minus 2 is minus 2x. I'm done with that bracket and then on to the second bracket. So now minus one by three X squared is minus three ones are three. And there's my X squared minus one by X minus by plus is a minus one X minus by minus is a plus two ones are two. Okay. And just like before, I can only add like terms together. So that's my only cubed term. Let's have a look at our squares. We have an x squared there and a minus three x squared there. So minus three plus one is minus two x squared. And then we have minus two minus one. So that's minus three x and then the plus two. Okay, so you can see we're right back to what we started with. So that was part B of that 2014 question. Part C then was a simultaneous equation. So I'm going to pause the video now and just give you a chance to try it. 
Right, let's have a look at part C. Hopefully you got on well with it. Okay, so a set of simultaneous equations is, is a very special set of equations because whatever answer you get for X and Y solves both equations at the same time. That's what simultaneous means, at the same time. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, whatever answer you get for X and Y, you're going to show that the top equation equals 18. And at the same time, that same value of X and Y on the bottom equation will be equal to minus 10. Okay, so what you do is you have to, you can only ever solve one letter at a time. Okay, so in other words, if I have equation such as this, I will never be able to solve X and Y at the same time like that because X and Y can have many different solutions. OK, and you have no way of knowing uh, which is the right option, OK, because they all equal 10. So what you do is you cancel one of the letters um, and you, you figure out what the other one was. So in other words, if I told you, well, X is actually equal to seven, well, then now you can figure out that Y is three. OK, and that will be 10. So that's how simultaneous equation works. You cancel one of the letters, and when I say cancel, you cancel it to zero, and you solve it for the other letter. Okay, now, whether you cancel the X's or the Y's does not matter at all. Okay, put a line under them. You look at them and you figure out, is one easier to cancel than the other? Okay, so if I'm to cancel the X's, in other words, I have a five and a two, so I would bring them up to 10. So to do that, I'd multiply the top by five and the bottom by two. And you can see then I would have a 10x and a 10x. And then you always need a plus and a minus. So I'd have to change the signs of one of the lines. OK, that's not too bad. Let's have a look at the y's. So I have a minus 3y and a plus 9y. OK, well, if I multiply the top equation by three, then I'll have three threes or nine y and I have a nine y here. So that's good. I don't have to multiply the bottom by any, or you could say you're multiplying it by one, which doesn't change it. The other good thing about the y's is one is already a plus and one is already a minus. OK, and when you have a plus nine and a minus nine, they give you zero, minus three, plus three, zero. So as long as you have a minus and a plus of the same number, they will cancel to zero which is exactly what we're trying to do. So the y's are easier. So let's multiply the top one by, by three. And um, I can't just multiply the y's. I, what I do to one piece of that equation, I have to do to it all. So every piece of that has to be multiplied by three. So three twos are six x. Three by minus three y is minus nine y. Three by 18 is 54. And then the bottom line, you can just take it down because uh, multiplying it by one doesn't, um, doesn't change it. Put a line under it, okay? And then you go, you look at the minus nine plus nine cancels directly, and then you're adding. So I have six X plus five X. It's like an old fashioned sum that you would have done in national school. So six and five is 11 X. 54 minus 10 is 44. You divide by the number in front of X, just like you would any other algebra question. And you get X being equal to four. So you now have figured out that all of the X's here are four. OK, so you sub in four because now you know what one of the letters is. It, is. it doesn't matter which equation you sub into, because remember what I said at the start, each equation have the same answer for X and Y. So you sub in whichever one looks the easier for you. And it doesn't matter, I'm going to pick the top one. I have figured out that X is four, so that X is four. So I put in my new knowledge. Two fours are eight, minus three y is equal to 18. Subtract eight from both sides or bring the eight over, whichever way you look at it. 
so that you get minus 3y being equal to 10. And divide both sides, sorry, I have minus 3y equal to 10. Divide both sides by that minus 3. And have y equals to minus 10 over 3. And if I put that into a calculator, so 10 over 3, you can either write it as 3.3333333 or minus 10 over 3 like that. Okay, the advantage of leaving it as a fraction is that you have no rounding error. Okay. So that's the first part. Your second part then says to verify your answer to part C, part one. Okay, you have to be careful when it says verify because verify means you must sub your answers into both equations, okay? So what I do is I half the page like that and I do it to each equation. So there's my first equation, 2x minus 3y is equal to 18. And because it's simultaneous equations, you have to show that the answers you just found works in both equations. Okay, you found that x is 4, you found y is equal to minus 10 over 3. Okay, so sub them in. So you have 2, and I'm subbing in my new knowledge, which was x being 4, minus 3, and I have minus 10 over 3 there, is equal to 18. Okay, so on my calculator, two fours are eight, minus by minus is a plus. The threes will cancel. You can do this in the calculator, it doesn't matter. And then is the left equal to 18? Yes, it is. So that little correct is maths language for verified. Okay, if you had used decimal, you would have got minus 3.33 here for y. Okay, so you'd have got two times four minus three times minus 3.33 and you're seeing is that equal to 18. Okay, so the eight is the same and you'd have had plus 9.99 is equal to 18. Okay, and then 9.99 plus the eight is equal to 17.99 is equal to 18. And you can just write down 18 equal to 18. In other words, you're rounding it to the nearest whole number. And that's okay too, that's perfectly fine. Okay, now it is every bit important that you show that the answers also work in the other equation, okay? Because that's what makes um, simultaneous equations special. It works in both equations. So now you're trying to show is that second equation equal to minus 10. So in this one, five fours are 20, plus by minus is a minus uh, nine times that is 30 equal to minus 10. 20 minus 30 is minus 10 equal to minus 10. Correct. So you can see why I leave it as a fraction, even though it may look harder to deal with. It multiplies in beautifully and there's no rounding error. OK, so it makes this part easier. OK, or if you had done decimal, of course, you would have gone five times four uh, plus nine times minus three point three three equal to minus ten. You'd have still got 20 here. And I'd have 3.33 by 9 uh, plus 29 point, no, sorry, that'll be a minus. My apologies. Because plus by minus is a minus, 29.97. Is that equal to minus 10? Is minus 9.97 equal to minus 10? Well, let's round it to the nearest whole number. And yes, it is. So that's how you verify your answers to simultaneous equation. Probably the biggest mistake people make in this type of question, well, two common errors. One, they don't know what it means to verify your answer. So that's all it means. And the second one is they forget that you must show it for both equations. So make sure you do it for both.